Hey, it's Bernie Gawak and I'm on my back garden looking at the Sunday Times on the 26th of February 2012. I'm also recording this short clip using Audio Boot on the iPod Touch. I'll put it in my pocket on the front page. May she rest in peace, Marie Colvin. Excellent coverage of Marie and what she meant to the Sunday Times. Inside the paper front page is actually her cameraman, Paul Connery, who hasn't been rescued yet. His wounds are of shrapnel. They were getting some infection. and needs to be pulled out of there. Some interesting other front page news. The Mater site, which is the Children's Hospital of Ireland, was red flagged a year ago. Sarah McInerney and Stephen O'Brien write about it, pointing out that, you know, what happened was there was a short meeting that was made, several short meetings. The most recent one from November 5th, 2010, where it was stated that from the perspective of onboard Planola, which is the main Irish planning council that the height and the, the way the site was being maintained uh, or conceptualized was going to be a problem, a significant issue. Also on the front page from Robin Henry and Cal Flynn, apps spy on phone texts. Depending upon how you read this, well, I can read this way. There are terms and conditions when you download an app to tell you your address book. The messages are going to be accessed, so if you ignore that, you may get what you get. Sarah McInerney also has an inside story. Institutes are warned on new status. I should declare the fact that I work for LIT.ie, which is one of the institutes bonding together to make a technological university. What Sarah points out is it's probably going to be political. It cuts the quick. There's really only room for one, so says the Minister for Education. That might be the Carlo Waterford amalgamation, most likely. It's probably well deserving, but critically, you have Big Phil Hogan and Brendan Howland serving ministers who are from that region. Dublin's also possible, possible as a technological university or a technical university. I believe they call them technological universities. Dublin would make sense in terms of the assets that are scattered around the town. Guevara, well, Roots and Art Revolution, if you're listening, if you're listening, Christian Payne, Siobhan McGuire has a nearly a full-page story about the Galway Council planning a monument to celebrate the city's links to the Argentinian rebels and sisters. Now, when he was in the state, or rather in Shannon, he mentioned his uh, connections to Ireland. Che Guevara's grandmother, Anna Lynch y Tortez, Anna Lynch y Ortiz, was a descendant of Patrick Lynch, born in 1715, left Galway, married in Buenos Aires in 1749, and her son, Ernesto Sr., was Shea's father. And he noted this, Che Guevara noted this, when he stopped in Shannon in 1965. Inside the paper, some other things I'll point out concerning ebooks. Ebook pirates may have banged 8 million, says the story. John Mooney wrote it. They got the face of a web dev who's uh, listed as the admin of a, of a site I actually used for a while. It's a .nu site that's been pulled off the web, library.nu. Brainchild of Fidel Nunez, who's a graduate of NUI Galway, put together this thing. They downloaded hundreds of thousands of ebooks. I mean, prominent writers, authors, stuff with theirs, but a lot of academic textbooks. So, if you downloaded the books, you were, you know, encouraged to make a payment via PayPal. Library NU then said, thank you. And in those thank you notes issued by PayPal are the names of Felix, or Fidel Nunes and his mother. So they've been shut down. And the graduate, the NUA Galway graduate, might have banked 8 million euro in the back of all this. Amazing, huh? The rest of this paper has some stuff, some long reads that are worth looking at. Um, we're not long reads. I'll show you in a minute. It concerns ebooks themselves. You know, the story by Gabriella Monaghan, sort of a soft, fluff piece about Irish schools making the switch to ebooks, pointing out that um, Irish, some Irish publishers, the Educational Company of Ireland, Edco, 100 year old company, has made its, uh, converted 80 of its textbooks into ebooks for secondary schools. And then down across the country, they have samples, including one from St. Kevin's in Dublin, where uh, you can get a 40% savings of books if you. If you Sign up for a scheme where you rent the books and the iPad for 150 euro a year. I think there's another story inside the story. Sure, the iPad's good, but actually isn't the best when it comes to e-books. There's cheap ways of doing that. iPad's good for an educational thing. Here's the inside story on Marie Colvin, her last assignment. I read this thing twice. 
because I've, I've been in areas where I've been shot at interesting stuff here. I mean, I, I know the Sunday Time doesn't listen to me, but like, geez, guys, you got a reporter on assignment and you know there are communications dangers with how your reporter is getting back to you, couldn't you just get together with some of the specialized communications tech that you get from the SAS, get from the people that are on the consultancy services with the staff, and get her, get the uh, reporter set up with stuff that isn't as easily detectable. I mean, apparently, you could do telemetry on the building where they were staying based on the, the emissions, electronic emissions the building was making. And what Marie had to do is run back inside or run to the entrance hall and pick up her shoes. She got hit by shrapnel and explosion with a shell that hit right in the front of the building. The people that survived that attack were back here in the middle of the building uh, where there's actually a, a border, a, um, not only a strong border wall, but an internal structural wall that prevented them from getting hit. And that's where she needed to be. Uh, fair play to the journals. The ones that survived did know where to go. But the point I'd make again, if you're gonna go out in an area we're gonna be at risk, where there are going to be shells hitting all around. Can't you please have the technology that gives you half a, half a, half a shot of getting out of there? It's certainly not being detected. And I know the technology exists, lads. Give me a call. I'll um, talk about it on Twitter if you want more details. You know, I point you towards this thing, Kindle. No emissions from it. But here's the thing I'd point out. Roisin Ingalls got a really good story. She writes, uh, it's like an empty wallet type of a story. It's uh, an austerity story about surviving just by cooking your own stuff and all that. And the Irish Times, uh, who I subscribe to through the Kindle, has really good stuff in it this week um, about an empty wallet's perspective. No empty wallets in the politician's bags. Michael Clifford writes a long story because politicians are going after the media. And here's the story, though. You can't claim, as a politician, that you're on the high road of ethics. And what you do is uh, you just throw stuff back at the media. A lot of people elected Labour in Fine Gael because they thought the upper echelons of politics would be swept away, but, you know, looking for this new broom, sweeping out the old politics, hasn't actually worked. There is actually a growing sense of entitlement permeating, permeating every strand of government still, a big disconnect between governed and the governors. And what I, what I would say, as an American looking at this, a lot of the politicians are taking liberties. In the States, some of the things Irish politicians are doing will be called misappropriation of, of the finances. They're using entitlements. They're entitled to a certain number of money for miles to execute their business, and they're disclaiming it. About that much, four inches of column text here of Clifford's article actually points out the misclaimed mileage that Roy Quinn, the Minister for Education, has, has grabbed. So, that's... You're not entitled. You really aren't. You're not entitled to the stuff you're claiming. And that's perhaps the biggest issue. One big red rose for you. If you're listening from the sideshow, because you're spilling in here on Bloody Southern City FM, know that next few weeks I'll be showing you growth in my back garden as these roses take hold. Follow the stories over on Flickr.com, struck photos, struck Irish eyes. If you want to see the garden come into bloom. Otherwise, listen to the sideshow. Find it on iTunes. Sideshow. All one word. I'm Bertie Goldbach. I'm an American in Ireland. Thanking you for listening. Bye for now.